Hey folks, thought I'd do a video going over all my Upland hunting gear and GoPro setup. Hopefully with this video I can give you some good info on the stuff I have in case you might want to buy it yourself. Just a heads up, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. And uh, if you have any questions about the stuff that I go over in my setup, um, just leave them in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, I'll also include in the description of the video the names of all the stuff that I covered today. That way, you know, you can easily just copy paste it and find it on Amazon or Google or wherever if you want to buy it. So, uh, yeah, anyway, let's uh, get right into it. So, in my opinion, um, most important piece of gear you can own is a good pair of boots. Um, and I have two pair here today. Um, one that I've worn on my right for a really long period of time, and then the ones on my left I just picked up this season. Um, and let's just start with the ones that are that are on my right. Um, these are the Rocky S2V uh, boots, and yes, they are Army boots. They are Army combat boots. Um, they're in the Coyote Brown color, and they're an eight-inch boot. Um, these things are awesome. I've hunted with them. I used them for you know six and a half years that I was in the Army and uh, they are great. It, I always use the same boots all the time, and they really feel like you're just wearing tennis shoes when you're going out doing hunting stuff. Um, they're comfortable, lightweight, and they have a vibrant sole. You can see mine is a little bit worn from use, obviously, why I had to get a new pair, but they really do grip the ground. Um, whether you're going through rocky terrain or grass or whatever, these things are fantastic. It gives you really good ankle support. Um, you know, you also have a, a huge feature that I love is if you can see here, the stitching here along the sole um, really helps to secure the sole to the boot. That way you don't have any of the separation. You can see I've had these boots for probably about three years and I've had no separation when it comes to that. They last and they're super, super durable. I mean, you'll wear out the bottom like I did well before um, the structural integrity of the boot goes down. Um, you can also see too, they have these, you know, drainage holes for aeration. You know, if your feet get hot, my feet did kind of get a little bit hot, but it wasn't too bad. They don't sweat too bad in these boots. Um, but these are great if you do go through water um, and you have to, you know, move through it and keep going. Um, it does really drain really, really well. Uh, fun fact too is once my old pair of like hunting or army boots kind of get shot, I transition them over to become my fly fishing wet wading boots, and I just put neoprene socks on, and these work great. The they the water drains out of them super fast and it's really easy to walk around and pretty long distances when you're fly fishing and you don't really have to worry about scuffing up your nice pair of uh, um, wading boots that you might have that go with your waders for fly fishing. So can't say enough good things about these. Again, these are the Rocky S2Vs. Uh, I think they go around $200 a pair, but well, well worth it. And if you don't mind, you know, maybe being a little toolish and walking around in army boots, they will serve you really well um, like they did for me. So great, great boot. Uh, the ones that I have here that I just got this season are the uh, Danner uh, Vitals, and this is the brown variation. Uh, you can see on the sole, uh, pretty good grip. I haven't had any issue or complaint with these yet. They're really lightweight. Um, it says that they're, they're waterproof, um, and I have not tested that yet. I haven't gone through any water uh, so far this year or any snow. But uh, you know, I think I think they should hold up pretty good. The one of the folks I talked to at the store said that he really liked these boots for both early season and late season. Um, and you know, so far in early season, they worked great. They kept my feet dry and and um, they didn't sweat too much either, which was good. So uh, so far so good. Really like them. Um, they only cost me about $125, and I got a $25 store credit that I used for more shotgun ammo. So that was definitely a win. But uh, yeah, again, eight inch as well. I, I always like having that extra ankle support. I think for me personally, I need it when you're moving under heavy load. And uh, yeah, these are great, super comfortable. And uh, yeah, great boot. Um, and then lastly, I'll say, you know, you can't have a good pair of boots without a good pair of socks as well, right? I think this is the other key element to taking care of your feet. And there's only one brand that I use and that's Fox River socks. These are, the best. They are fantastic. The green ones here I wear for more early season or when it's a little hotter. They're a little more thin, but you could wear them in winter time too. It's, it's really not going to hurt you that much. They don't just have, they're not as thick though. It won't kind of give you as much warmth if you need it. But uh, I've had these, I don't even know how long I've had these socks. And you know, you can see there's, there's like no holes. There's no cuts in them. Um, they're a little more expensive than your standard Hanes ones that you're going to buy at Walmart or the store, but but they are going to last you forever. These have lasted me for, I mean, I'd probably say at least six, seven years. Um, I also have another one. These are just a little bit thicker ones. They go up all the way to about my calf. Um, I usually wear these kind of a little more late season. 
but uh, they're great. Moisture wicking, both both pair are, are absolutely fantastic. And they're still, again, in like perfect shape. Again, I probably had these for four years maybe and no issues at all. Absolutely fantastic. So can't recommend Fox River enough for, uh, for their socks. They are, they're the best. Uh, moving on um, to pants. Um, and I know there's a lot of very like upland specific pants that are out there for you know different brands that I've seen, but a lot of them are really expensive. And what I found is your standard Carhartt canvas pant. Um, that's what this is. This is this, the standard Carhartt canvas five pocket relaxed fit pant. And it's great for early season and even when it does get maybe a little bit later. They're durable. They're, they last forever. The only, I only had to get this new pair because the waistband got a little too small for me <laughs> for my last pair, but they're fantastic. I mean, and you can buy them for $35, $40 a pair versus spending, you know, $100, $200 for one of those specific upland hunting pants. You'll get more out of them, um, and they're way cheaper, in, in my personal opinion. So I love these. This is great for early season. They don't get too hot. Plenty of flexibility and they last forever. So this is a great, great pair. And then secondly, um, I use the Wrangler ATG Upland Hunting Pant for late season and then especially pheasant hunting when I'm going through real thick terrain. Um, these, these are great. I think it's around $50 on Amazon for, for this pair of pant. And uh, the, the material, this canvas-like material they have on the front really does protect your legs against some real thick briar and, and nasty brush. Um, you know, you can see it goes all the way up to about your, your hip here on the front of the pant. And then if I flip it over, it kind of just goes up to about your calf um, for, for coverage from your foot all the way to your calf on the back of your leg. So it doesn't give you full all the way up, but you don't really need it um, on the back of your leg. I'll say this too, is that these aren't waterproof, but they're water resistant. And I've walked through snow um, in these and they do help repel some of that, that water um, and ice and whatnot uh, from getting in and soaking your legs. If you wore like a pair of like long johns or you know thermal underwear underneath this, if it's really cold out, you're gonna stay plenty warm. Um, I've done that too, and that and combined with moving around, I was my legs were perfectly fine all day. Um, so yeah, these are great, durable. You know, again, last forever. I've used these for two seasons now, and uh, again, can't say enough good things about them. So good value. And then lastly, I'll say for, you know, kind of on the pants section is having a multi-tool. Um, I always carry this Gerber multi-tool. This is, I had this my whole time when I was in the army and used it for so many different things. It's just great to have another tool and a set on you um, in case you need it for whatever reason. A little knife, maybe to clean birds, you know, little pliers here, whatever you need. And funny enough, I actually, I always take this with me whether I'm fly fishing or hunting. And, um... Tucker actually ran into a porcupine last year when I was fishing, and I had to use this to actually get all the quills out. And it was a painful process, but I'm really glad that I had these because it saved me a trip to the vet. And the um, the small little set of like tweezers I had um, with my fly fishing gear was not going to do the trick. It couldn't grip it well enough. So again, this is just a great backup. You know, it's always one of those things like. You just have it on your belt in case you need it. You can just whip it out and use it. So it's great. I love this thing, and I'll, I'll have it forever. So, yeah. And then uh, um, kind of the last portion for the clothing section are my snake gaiters. So these are the turtle skin um, snake gaiters, and uh, they're, they're fantastic. These things are great. They're lightweight. This material, I mean, I saw plenty of video of, of this company showing snakes actually biting the material and not being able to puncture it. They're super flexible, as you can see. I mean, I can fold this thing multiple times over. Um, so you don't have that rigid, almost like uh, catcher shin guard, uh, snake guards that you see that a lot of other companies have that make it a little more difficult to walk or a little more uncomfortable. But these things are great. There's a zipper on the back that zips up on your calf and then this tongue here kind of goes over the laces of your boot to kind of provide a little bit more protection there. Um, these just kind of go up my entire shin and uh, I wear them all the way up until really the first major frost or snow we get here in Montana because uh, the rattlesnakes are out there. I ran into four last year and this year I already ran into one. Um, it's nice because they let you know uh, that they're there, but uh, you know, Jake the snake doesn't mess around and, and I don't mess around with snakes either. So 
good peace of mind. It's just nice having it, knowing that in case I did step on a snake that wasn't rattling, um, I'll be a little bit more secure with that and good pair of pants and boots on. So again, these are, these are great. I think they go around maybe 200 bucks. They are a little expensive, but they're, I think they're the best on the market. And again, having that peace of mind is, is something that, uh, that really helps when you're out walking around in tall grass and hunting in, in, you know, September and even sometime even to October. All right. So next thing to go over is, uh, one of the more fun things, I guess, be my shotgun I use. So I use a uh, Browning Satori Feather 725, and I absolutely adore this shotgun. It is amazing. Um, I've always wanted, you know, a nice over-under, and two years ago I uh, found one that was on sale, this one specifically, and uh, I, I, I scooped it up. It is served me super well. It's lightweight. Um, this is a 12 gauge uh, variation and it, it is fantastic. I love the little engraving, you know, right here on the on the nickel. Um, you know, you have your typical safety lever and switch that's right here. You can choose either your under or over as your first uh, barrel to fire out of. Came with multiple chokes as well. Um, just a fantastic shotgun. Easy to disassemble, easy to clean, um, and, you know, just great. Uh, you know, shells eject whenever you open up the breech on after you fire, so it makes it a little easier to, to pull your shells out and swap out for new ones. Um, yeah, can't say enough great things about it. It's going to last me forever, last me a lifetime, and probably then some. So, again, great. I love it. Um, super fantastic shotgun, and can't recommend it enough. Okay, so moving on. Um, another cool piece of gear is my hunting vest and um, as you can see it is a little larger than some of your traditional ones but this thing is fantastic this is the Q5 center fire um, hunting vest and it is exactly what I need for going you know miles on end away from the truck um, it's great at load bearing I can carry my shells water for me water for a dog you know snack little first aid kit, it, it can do it all. And it can do it really well when it comes to actually holding it, that weight on your body versus just a typical standard upland hunting vest. It really, really does work. So I'll kind of go from the front here um, and then work my way towards the back. So in the front, it comes with just your standard two shotgun pouches. Um, obviously you have like a little hip waist belt you can adjust and it just clips into place. Um, these pockets are really cool because they have Velcro on the front and then you know the pouch itself has a zipper on it. Um, there's also a Velcro inside of the pocket so you can Velcro it here and I just use this as my ready bag whenever I hunt. I keep one fully secured and one just like this so I can easily reach in and grab shells whenever I need them to reload. Um, you could also alternatively just put the flap over the top of it and it keeps it a little more secure in case maybe you're going to go through some little heavier brush or you just want to have it a little more secure. So either way works, um, but this is kind of the setup that I do. I just try to keep the weight balanced and then move shells over as, as I shoot and, uh, and uh, kill more birds. So just secure this real quick. Um, the next thing I want to say too is it was actually kind of funny that it took so long for me to find, you know, a lot of these vests that actually had water bottle holders. And you'd be surprised at how many upland hunting vests just don't even have anything in the side. And I keep these for Tucker, my dog. Um, these are just, you know, $2 cheap Gatorade, you know, these squeeze bottles um, that you can get at Walmart. And uh, yeah, it just fits great in these little sleeves and I can carry these um, really on my hip, again, disperses the weight and it, and it works great. Um, Tucker, though, doesn't really do a good job of drinking the water whenever I just squeeze it at him. A lot of the water will go out the side of his mouth. So actually, on one of the side pouches here, I carry a little collapsible plastic lightweight dog bowl. Um, you can see it just opens up just like that. And uh, I'll just pour the water directly into here to give it to him. That way we're not wasting water when we're pretty far away from the truck and we don't really have a good clean water source. Anything that's left over that he doesn't drink, boom, you just pour it back in the bottle and, and you're good to go. So helps out a lot early season, especially when it's hot. You know, you can keep the dog active a little more with a little more water. So that's helpful. Um, yeah, so side pocket here has another zipper that goes down here in the front. Um, you, know, you can put, you know, whatever 
you know, license or anything else that you want to put in there as well. Forgot to also mention there is another zipper in the front of the shell pouch here and then another Velcro thing here. I mean, I don't know, you can maybe put another pouch there or some cool guy patches or something. I don't know really what you'd put there, but um, that other side pouch is mirrored on this side, so you have a whole another side pouch on the side of the vest. Um, if you need it for just additional storage or whatever you want to put in there, keys, wallet, you name it. Moving on to the straps. The straps themselves are, are, are wide, they're durable. Um, again, they really help with that load load carrying capacity. They're not intrusive, so they don't get in the way. They kind of have a nice little um, texture here that helps, you know, when you mount the shotgun, it's not going to be slipping around all over the place. So when you mount on your shoulder, it kind of grips to the butt of your shotgun. Um, you have here on the left side, you know, a little pouch for your phone, you know, Garmin, dog holler, you know, whatever you name it, you can put it in here. And then also comes with a D-ring that you can put in, you know, rope or cable, whatever, to, to kind of secure it down and dummy cord it to yourself in case it falls out. Happened to me more than one times with my <laughs> Garmin GPS device, so nice to have that. And then also you have a clamp here for your camelback, so in case, you know, you don't want it flapping all over the place, you can just secure it, you know, right here on the top, and it keeps it nice and clean and secure out of the way so you don't have to be reaching around all over the place to try to grab your camel back if you want uh, want some drinking water. So speaking of that, um, let's kind of turn it around here. And another big part about this vest and why I decided to get it was because of this, this backpack on the back. Now it's secured via Molly system along with all the other pouches and everything you see here too. Um, but it's it's great. It's got a huge amount of storage space. I secure my camel back in the top here, as you can see. Just you know, fill it up with water and you just stick it down in here. You can also run the hose right out of the top here, so it's nice and secured, and you can zip it up all the way. You can put other snacks, lunch, whatever you whatever you want. You can go in the back of this backpack, and you'll have room for days, which I think is amazing. Um, yeah, so that's a great little addition. And then also in this pouch here is where actually I keep my uh, battery bank for when I go record with my GoPro. So I'll kind of get in the GoPro setup in a little bit, but really, you know, I just open up this part, you know, I stick it here in the back and then I can run the cable out the back of this portion of the backpack and then the GoPro itself just sits on my head. So that's kind of where I store that, but I'll kind of get into that here in a little bit. Um, yeah, so lastly, um, on the back of the, uh, on the back of the vest, and uh, actually, you know what, let's do this instead. So the most important thing is the actual bird bag. So it might be a little hard to see, but this thing has a ton of storage back here. I can fit three full large pheasants in the back of this and still have room. This, this is an amazing bird bag. It sits well on your hip like everything else, and it's got a ton of space. You could throw empty shells, anything you want back there. And there's other little pockets back here too that separate. If you really want to get, you know, separate other things or birds or whatever else, this thing's just got pocket for days. Um, there's a nice, you know, thick line on here too that helps protect, you know, the back, your back here from getting it all cut up from anything. And again, super great, ton of space. Uh, and then the last pouch is right here on the back. And this one is where I keep, you know, first aid um, and just some other kind of essentials, mainly for the dog, but um, just a little dog first aid kit. You know, it can work for humans too, but uh, just some basic things. I'm not going to go over all the details of it that are in the, the first aid kit. You can look them up online for the product itself. But one thing I do keep in here that I think is really important, especially in the early season, are honey sticks. And you can buy these at Walmart. Um, they're great for the dog. If I use them, you know, about a little bit into the hunt, uh, that's like a kind of electrolyte, you know, energy booster for the dog. I give Tucker one or two of these and, you know, he's back in it. He can, he can go hunting and, you know, help him prevent cramping. Um, you know, when I talked to the vet, you know, he, my vet told me that this is probably one of the best things you can give your dog. That'll just give him some energy and keep him from cramping and just keep him out there hunting even longer. So a uh, good little thing to keep. Um, these are super easy. You don't have to keep like a whole big thing of honey in your pack and that can get messy. These are just little one-time use sticks. That, uh, that are great. And again, you can get those at Walmart. Um, and I have the box right here. This is what they look like uh, on the shelf. So uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really know how much these are, but it wasn't that expensive. Uh, other things I have here are just an, an extra thing to take care of Tucker in case his feet get cut or gets a split pad. This is a Lewis boot, um, you know, goes over the dog's foot. It's made out of like 
pretty thick rubber. Uh, you can use this also in the winter time. The variation I have, I don't know if you can see it or not, but they have little holes on the side to for ventilation and to drain out water. But you can just cover those up with duct tape when it's winter time to prevent you know, snow getting in there and then it melting and refreezing and, and messing with the dog's foot. But uh, yeah, these are amazing. Lewis dog boots, great. They got a little bit of uh, you know traction at the base of them too. Um, and whenever I secure those to the dog, I first start with some just some medical uh, self-adhesive tape and that goes around the dog's you know upper part of the paw like on his leg um, that way it's a little more breathable and it's a little more flexible so you're not cutting off circulation to the dog's foot and then the other part I use is duct tape and that goes over um, this portion of the boot right here on the outside to keep it you know, a little more water resistant keep dirt from getting in there and keeps the boot real secure to the dog's foot that way it doesn't rotate around or slip off and then you're you're losing a boot so these things are great. Um, helps if you're going through some pretty nasty terrain, you know, real sharp rock or cactus. These these boots will save your dog's feet, and in my opinion, I think they're the best ones out there on the market. So these things are fantastic. All right, so uh, let's put this over here. Next thing I'll go over um, is the dog collar and device that I use. So. I use the Garmin um, Alpha 200i, and this is the best dog training GPS device out there on the market, in my in my opinion. I mean, you got satellite imagery you can get in this thing. I won't do a full review of like all the features of it, just kind of a summary. But you know, you have you can do you can tone the dog, you can vibrate, you can turn on running lights with a collar with the dog um, at nighttime to see him better. It's, it's got everything. It can tell you the distance to your truck. It can tell you how far the dogs went, how far you've gone. It, it does everything. Um, another two other cool features is this little tab here that says SOS. Um, I'm obviously not going to hit the button, but you know you flip it open and you hit that and they'll send the choppers out for you. So I use this even when I go fly fishing or, or to areas that I don't have a lot of cell service where I know that you know maybe there is uh, you know, opportunity for me to you, truck could break down or bear or whatever else. It's just nice to have that in your pack and your kit uh, in case you don't have cell service. So this also has the ability, it is a subscription uh, that you can pay for where you'll get, um, uh, you can get like a couple of text messages a month that you can send via their satellite network. So you don't have to call in the SOS button. You can just text your buddy. It'll also give the GPS coordinates for where you're at. So they can just real easily plug it in in their phone and then use Apple or, or Google Maps to get to where you're at and help you out. So super nice. You can preload all your contact info and even I think do pre pre done text messages as well to make it even easier. So it's a fully 100% um, touch screen, so you can scroll and do whatever just like an iPhone. And uh, yeah, it's got you know hard buttons on the side to to you know you can bound those to do whatever you want. But they'll change the menu and then also three buttons at the top that are also used for anything you want to bind them to. So I have mine set for tone, vibrate, and then continuous uh, shock. So yeah, it's great. Um, charge, I've used this thing for three days and uh, I didn't need to recharge the battery. So battery lasts a really long time with the two. Fantastic device, a little, little expensive, but again, it's gonna last you forever. And uh, yeah, it also works as a great way if you want to have a, just kind of a backup for your Onyx in case that goes down, you can preload um, waypoints and whatever else in this too. It's through Garmin's own um, system, which is a little bit more clunky than Onyx in my opinion, but it's a good backup in case you really need it. Uh, yeah, in case your Onyx goes down. So and then the dog collar, this is just, I think it's the TT15X. It, it's the one that came with the device. I don't really know the name, but you know, it is a little bit of antenna and it's a little bigger than some of the other standard dog collars, but it's great. Provides all the tracking info. And then also on the front here, you can, there's two little LED lights you can turn on at night so you can see your dog, whether it's in the early morning or later at night, you can see him much better, get a little high vis, and that actually is a lot more helpful than you think. So use that a lot too, but uh, yeah, great, uh, great device. So lastly here, we'll go over uh, my GoPro setup. So kind of going over again, this is the battery bank that I use. Um, I use a GoPro Hero 9. I'm not gonna go through all like the, the settings that I put on the GoPro for filming, unless you guys really want to know that, then I'll, I'll put that in the, in the description as well. So, um, and then I also have this awesome case. So this is 3BR Power Sports 
brand and, and they are the only ones that I could find that have a device that's like this. This is not a waterproof case, but it allows for an external power for your GoPro in a much more secured metal case that is water resistant, okay? So the big problem is, is and you know, you can, folks that have used a GoPro before is you just have these little batteries that aren't gonna last you all day. And if you go upland hunting or any sort of hunting, you know, you don't always know whenever the bird's gonna flush, right? It could be at any point in time. So you might wanna just roll your camera the whole time like I do. And battery and um, <clears throat> storage space are the two main problems you run into. So instead of having these little batteries, you know, you're gonna get external power that essentially plugs in right here to the GoPro and into an external battery bank that provides you power and recording for the entire day. So, um, I'll just kind of show how that works here with the with the GoPro. Um, you just take off the little hinge on the door. So you take the hinge off of the door and um, you essentially slide it in. But before I actually go into that, I use for my storage for my GoPro, I actually use a 512 gig micro SD. And that allows me to do multi-day recording all day. I wanted to make sure I didn't have any um, issue with having storage space for my GoPro. and you know, it really does work. Like, I don't want to worry about battery. I don't want to worry about running out of recording time for my for my GoPro, and this really does do the trick. So again, kind of that peace of mind thing. You can just turn it on and let it run all day, and you're not going to run out of storage space or battery power with this setup. So cool. Let's uh, kind of go into this a little bit. So again, you know, I'll kind of, I've already fed this through, but I'll kind of stick it through this part. But as you can see, this is the USB-C, I believe, outlet that goes directly in the GoPro to provide power. And this is kind of the outside part that seals, if you will, on the exposed side of the GoPro. Because normally this would just be exposed if you ran power in there and you can worry about dust, debris, moisture getting in here and, and ruining your GoPro because it's no longer waterproof, right? So this will essentially plug in to the side here into the GoPro to provide that power. So let me show you how it works. <clears throat> Feed this in here. And then all you do again, you just have the door off and then you just make sure the little flaps are, are up on the side. And then you just slide it into the case. And it secures perfect right inside there. You close the flap. And then you just screw right here onto the side, screws in nice and tight, and that thing is snug. It is secure onto your GoPro. Um, again, provides a nice external hard case, and then on the base here, you can still flip these down to put them through in whatever head strap or whatever else you need to put on it. Um, still has the microphone open, whole screen in the back is still accessible, and gets that nice tight seal. Um, another thing I want to say about this, this brand 3BR Power Sports is they are like, have fantastic customer service. Um, the cable that I had before got a little bit frayed and I was just a little bit outside the one year warranty and I emailed their support and Don got back to me within, I think it was, it was the same day. It was a matter of hours and, uh, shipped me a brand new cable, completely free, super great guy. Um, again, excellent customer service. This is the best product in the market. If you want to have an external power supply for your GoPro to give you that longevity to hunt fish, whatever you name all day. And also it's lightweight. It's not super heavy. Um, the last kind of piece that I do with, with mine as well is I just have like a really cheap you know, windsock that goes over the top of, uh, of this metal case. I won't put it on now, but I mean, you kind of get the point. It just goes over the top of it. A lot of times out on the plains of Montana, um, it's a bit windy. So this cuts down on that a lot. And then, you know, helps provide just a little bit better audio, uh, when you're outdoors. So I had to kind of puncture a little hole just to make it work, but this thing is super cheap. I mean, it's only a couple bucks just to, in order to feed the cable through so I could get it working properly with, uh, with my GoPro. <clears throat> and then lastly, you know, these are a dime a dozen. It's just the head strap. This is what I use. I don't use a chest rig because I think it doesn't capture the full, you know, scenery of what you're going through when you're hunting. Um, I think the head strap is just a lot better. So, you know, pretty simple. It's, it's speaks for itself. I don't really need to set that whole thing up. Um, but yeah, so I'll kind of show you how I rig it up on, on my actual vest. But again, see now, you know, now that we have this together, all I do is I can just take my external battery bank and I just plug in the GoPro straight to the USB outlet. I power on my, my battery bank and 
I've got power, as you can see, and this will run all day, all day, and then multiple day actually. I can I think I can get about three days worth of hunting out of this. Um, the actual battery bank that I'm using here is a 30,000 milliamp I want to say battery bank. It also has a solar um, charger on the outside. It takes forever. I don't really use the solar power part of it. Um, I don't think it really, it'd take way too long to charge it up all the way or give you any meaningful part. It also has a wireless charger. Um, it's got a flashlight on it and it's waterproof. So um, yeah, worked good. Got it off of Amazon. Wasn't, wasn't too insanely expensive, but um, yeah, that'll, that'll last you good. 30,000 uh, milliamps is, is plenty enough. So this is kind of how I set it up again on my, on my rig, on my actual pack. Um, what I'll do is I'll just take this battery bank and stick it right in this front pouch here. Tuck down the rubber part, and zip it up as far as I can, and that's it. And then this just essentially loops around. Um, you know, maybe I'll get like a um, a little bit of a, like a rubber band or something, and kind of secure this so it's not as like loose and everywhere and getting hung up on sticks and going through brush and whatnot. But really, I just attach this to my head thing, and this just rests right on my head. And uh, yeah, I just walk around lightweight. Doesn't really, it's not very intrusive and it works great. And I, I feel like I can get some pretty good video um, out of it. Uh, yeah, so that pretty much covers everything um, that I have for all my gear and my setup. Again, if you have any other questions, just you know, hit me up in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them. If you want more of an in-depth you know, review of my Garmin Alpha 200i or the settings I have on my GoPro, um, to capture, you know, HD footage all day and, you know, kind of how, what I do that makes it work with that. Just let me know. And then maybe I'll do a separate video on that too. But, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in and, uh, have a good one.